Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here at Painted Studio. Welcome back. We are working on part two of our birdhouse that we started yesterday that we did with the stain and put the uh, copper, uh, the set coat copper on and we did texture medium on it to get this cool texture on it. And so today we're going to leaf the roof. Now I'm going to shift our zoom so you can see what I'm talking about if it lets me. Let's do that. Okay, so here, here we go. Here is our birdhouse. Now I'm going to go, okay, whoops, so here, forgot to turn the volume down on my iPad so that I can see and hear what you guys are all saying, but uh, it would have been good if I turned the volume off. All right, let me move my phone to the side so you don't have to see that and so I don't do something dumb like knock it and knock it out of position. Uh, a couple things as we're getting started. We are having the June product of the month is our Artsyville metallic paste. It is a beautiful metallic plaster that comes in a neutral creamy color, but can also be tinted with your favorite coloring system. Use um, code JUNE20 at checkout to save 20% on it. Okay, so let's get back to this. We used our Roberson's gold leaf size, water-based gold leaf size, over every part here that was painted with the copper set coat that we applied yesterday. Here's our copper set coat and my very used up tired cane container. Um, and here is my Roberson's. Now you apply Roberson's with a brush, a sprayer, a roller, uh, preferably a low damp velour roller, not a sponge roller. Sponge rollers create bubbles and that foam then once the bubbles pop create little dimples and you get spots that don't have foil adhesive in them, I'm um, foil adhesive, um, gold leaf size in them and it gets a speckly weird kind of textured finish. Now I also did paint the bottom of this but I have to put another coat on it and then we're going to have to gild that with the copper leaf because um, I couldn't do it in one fell swoop otherwise I'd have no way to set the birdhouse down without screwing up the tack. Now one of the things that I love about the Robersons um, is that once it's set up it has the tack meaning the stickiness of oil based size which is very different if you're used to us using the Artsyville foil adhesive it's a very different product this is much thinner it goes on smoothly it has a little leveling properties and it does not dry anywhere near as sticky as the Artsyville foil adhesive. So do not be surprised if you want that at level of adhesion, you want to use the Artsyville foil, uh, foil size for foils. You will not have a successful result if you try to use this with foils. It's not sticky enough. But what it is, is the perfect adhesive level for foil, uh, for metal leaf like copper. Now you see I'm going to do this again with my hands like you've seen me do before. I'm actually going to kind of turn it so that we both can see what I'm doing. And I'm just tapping that on there and then I'm going to take my skewings brush and just tap it down. And we get this beautiful coppery finish on here which is much 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 brighter than the copper paint so if you look at that the copper finish is much brighter and you can see those beautiful details um, of the plaster of the the texture medium that we use through the stencil now this is not going to be again that smooth shiny perfectly um, polished finish that you see on things like picture frames. That's a different gilding technique than we're using here. We're using an acrylic size um, on a textured surface. So we're going to have a textured response um, to the leaf. 
it's not going to be able to be burnished and mirror smooth i didn't want that i literally wanted all of the texture to be part of this so now i'm going to go back down here i'm going to tap my copper leaf on here and this is real copper and you can get this at any craft store michael's hobby lobby um, you can also get it through your if you're a gilder you can get it through your gold leaf supply places and i'm going to gently tuck it up under here because yes i did manage to put size up under here even though i wasn't sure i was going to get around to doing that but i did okay so we're going to tap that on we're going to tap this up under here where i got it up under that eve we're going to turn it around and get this part. I'm going to set this aside because I'm going to use that part to go around the base here. I will not waste my copper, but it makes more sense if I do it so that I can just sort of lay it square on. Now I'm going to turn this though in this way so that I can actually square it up a little bit better than I did on the other side. Of course I managed to tear it a little bit. And I tore it a little bit right there. And I'm going to tap my copper leaf down. Look at that beautiful adhesion on there. Not too gummy, not too sticky. Because if it was too gummy, as I would be tapping here, the foil, uh, the, the leaf would break, and I'd be getting a gummy deposit on the end of my brush. Um, and I know this because I have done it. I have got worked with water-based gold leaf sizes that have been a disaster. They have totally gone gummy on me, made a big old mess of the project I was working on. Very disappointing with the results. So now I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to come down here at the bottom. We're going to get this part that I missed. Sorry folks, I thought I hit the uh, do not disturb button on my phone, but clearly I did not. And folding this up under, and I have just this little tiny spot that somehow I managed to miss. So I'm going to take that, do that there, and fold it up under, tap all of this down. Like to tap it you want to tap it and smooth it all down to the surface first now I've had this copper leaf forever I'm going to tell you that right now um, it's been around a while so some of the copper is ever so slightly discolored and that's fine uh, that doesn't bother me at the, at the least it's actually not on this piece it was the top piece so if you look closely you might see a couple streaks of more oxidized copper right in here where the rest of it's brighter. That doesn't bother me. I think it's kind of pretty. That's not going to be a problem. Um, if it was vital that it stayed all the same, I would do something else, but it's not. So I don't have to worry about it. All right, so I'm going to come around the sides here on the bottom. Tap that on. Tip this a little bit. So I can tear it off. Now you can actually use your brush to tear it off, um, but usually when I do that it crumbles a little more than I want it to. So I come back in and a lot of times I tear it with my hand. Okay. Let's turn it this way. We're also going to do the perch right here. So I'm going to take this copper, fold it around, tap it down on the end. Now you're seeing me do this with my bare hands. Um, it works for me because I have super dry skin and I generally don't cause any oxidation. I know people who have systems that are super acidic or they are very oily and it'll affect the metal. Um, 
So if you don't have, if you if you find your metals oxidizing, doing it the way I do it, um, put some gloves on. Or one of my other things to do is I cut the end of the book off, and then I slide. I don't think I can show you well, but let me see if I can show you a way to do this. There's you know there's always a, there's always these separating pieces of paper. And this is to preserve. <clears throat> excuse me to keep the metal from sticking to itself make it easier but if you cut the ends and then slide one of the pieces of paper down like this and apply it like that your hands don't have to touch it you don't have that issue of oxidizing and frankly I've done whole walls that way it can be faster than trying to do it other ways um, so there are cool methods to make applying this a little simpler. Of course, you know, when I'm doing small projects like this, it's going to be my hands because my hands are very dry and I don't generally have distortion of color issues because they are so dry. Now, for friends of mine who have very acidic systems, I've watched their stuff turn funky colors like almost immediately. Or they come back and they rub their hands across it one more final time to get that final check. And the trace residue from their hands sits on the copper. And, well, yeah, they've, they've had some very strange reactions happen. Okay, let's take that little piece that's right there. Let's tuck it in where this broke here. Now, I'm sure if you've all gone to Michael's and looked at the copper and the gold leaf and not known how to do it, these are the ways, these are ways to do it. It's very easy. It's very simple. All right, so now I've got to get up under these eaves. Come on. I'm going to do it with the short side because it's a little easier to manage. Um, And truly, I've, I've used every product that you've ever seen in Michael's. They're okay, but I will tell you right now, you'll get a better result using the gold leaf size that I'm showing you here because it's designed not to be too sticky and gummy and leave weird marks. I, I really am very impressed with it, which is why we're carrying it. And of course, you can find it on our site paintedstudio.com. Just look up uh, Gold Size or Roberson's or one of the many ways you can find things. <laughs> and it's under our paints and plasters and all that other stuff section on our website. So I'm going to tuck up under here. Now, up under the eaves is the messiest part because it's very hard for me to see in there. It's kind of hard to get my fingers in there. So I'm, I'm working this a little bit. But I think we're getting a pretty nice setup. So let's keep going. I don't want to do it that way. I'm just going to keep using the copper until I run out. And then if I run out, I'll go tear a little bit off another piece. But because composition and these non-precious metals are a little, they're manufactured a little heavier, so they're a little thicker, which means they're a little easier to use with your hands. Sorry, folks, I didn't realize I was completely giving you the back of the house so you couldn't see anything. So let's try it this way. Sometimes these positions that I have to get into for you guys to see are kind of weird and awkward for me. <laughs> let's tap that in. All right, 
I don't need much more, but I do need some. So I'm going to have to get a little more leaf. So I'm just going to tear some of this piece. And somehow I keep sliding. I, I have a ha ha habit of sliding everything to one side, so it's always off center on the camera. Um, I, you know, the more I think I know, the bigger the mess I make. All right, let's see if I can get this a little more centered for you all. Okay, so there we've got that tapped in there. Take off any extra. And then I'm going to need to put that, I think, in here. Because I can see a little gap spot in there. And I probably need, I think I need a little more up in here. Now, I'm going to run my fingers over this and see if I feel any sticky parts, because I thought I did a minute ago, but I don't. And then let's clean up all of this. Get all of this brushed off. So it's going to be another week of flying leaf in the studio. Now, I know a lot of professional gilders who do nothing but gilding. Um, they um, will save, if this was gold, not copper, but if it was gold, they save all these little bits and pieces that are called the skewings. And they put them into a container. Now you can't really reapply them to another surface once you're done with a job because what happens when you're doing this kind of stuff with the brush, bristles come off and little bits of dirt are on the surface near you and all of that sort of thing. But it doesn't matter. They take this in and into a tiny crucible and they can melt this metal, these metals down again and they can grind them up and turn them into gold dust or gold powders for, um, sorry, gold powders for doing like uh, flash gilding and stuff. I, I mean, if you're doing this all day, every day, and you're spending a lot of money on your metals, yeah, you're going to save your scraps because when you put it in the crucible, the heat burns out all of the little hair fibers from the brush and any extra schmutzy stuff that might be on there that you don't want. Um, if you're like me doing it from time to time, I don't keep the skewings. I tried once. I thought, oh, let me save all this, all this metal going everywhere. And then what I realized is that I had little bristles like this stuck into it and it made just a heck of a mess. Let me turn this on, see. Uh, let's see who's it. Oh, yes. Kate is Kate Whitson is the one who turned me on to the Rubberson size because it's really nice. And she has fooled actual architects into thinking it was oil size. Um, finger condoms are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they are called finger cuts. If anybody's ever seen them, they look like... It. They look like the fingertips of rubber gloves with an edge on them, but finger condoms is funny to call them. So I appreciate that. Um, let's see what else is going on here. Yes, you're right. They're nicer to wear than sweaty gloves. And hi, Jill and Rebecca and Cindy and Chloe. Thank you for all, all for coming in. So... I'm just going to finish doing this. I'm going to clean this up. And again, um, if I was doing gold leaf size, and it, I might be treating this a little more gently, but this is copper. It's a very easy to work with leaf because, again, this is much heavier than standard gold leaf. It's bigger leaf size, easier to work with. Um, and again, because my hands are dry, I can get away with sticking my fingers on stuff that not everybody can. <laughs> I don't recommend doing this with your fingers the first time if you don't know what you're doing. Um, 
I would always recommend grabbing, you know, some gloves, putting on some gloves so you don't get your hand oils on here. Um, I've learned over the, look, a little hair sticking out of there. Uh, I've learned over decades that I don't tarnish metals. It's just because my skin is so dry. Um, not, it's, a, it's a good thing for gilding. It's not a good thing in general for life. <laughs> I used to do a lot of this stuff and my hands would be so dry. My knuckles would split, which is, you know, not a pleasant thing. All right, so I have used my skewings brush to clean off a lot of it, but there's still little tiny bits and pieces of stuff. So I'm going to take a little tiny piece of cheesecloth. Um, real gold, I would choose a piece of very soft cotton t-shirt material, but this is a coarse surface too. So I can use something that's a little more aggressive to wipe off any odd bits and pieces that I don't want on here. Um, I'm using, you know, I'm not using a finely sanded wood. I'm not using um, a super precious metal. I have a lot of stuff going on on here. So I can, I can afford to be just a little aggressive with this. And again, this is our lint-free pre-washed cheesecloth, which in itself is an important thing. The fact that this is clean and lint-free means I won't get any stuff stuck, no fibers or anything else stuck into spots that um, that might have a little adhesive on here and then I have to get a tweezer out and pluck out the fibers and it, because it's pre-washed there's nothing on here that might do something bad to it like cause some weird oxidation because things that have been have not been cleaned and then have been handled a lot um, can cause problems too. You can have chemical residues or size or stuff on them. What the heck is under? There's always something sticking out under here. Oh my god. What am I? I'm telling you folks, you're you're lucky some days that I'm <laughs> just every day I'm finding little surprises somewhere. Alright, so I think we've got this in the upcoming days or so, I will do the, the copper on the bottom of this. I'm just, again, not going to do that right now because if I, did, if I do that, we're done with the end of the live today. But what I am going to do is show you how we clean the metal then to use Whitson's Universal Lacquer on it. So again, I'm going to take a couple pieces of cheesecloth on finer metals. I would probably go and use... Um, something cottony, like t-shirt material, but I don't need to do that right now. I'm just building up a little pad. I'm getting it wet. Again, bigger jobs, more water, bigger cloth, small jobs, not necessary. So I've got this wet, and I happen to have some of the Whitson's uh, degreaser for leaf. Um, however, if you don't have that, that's not a problem. Blue Dawn dish liquid. Not Ajax, not Palmolive, not anything else. Standard Blue Dawn dish liquid and a couple drops on a clean cloth that's wet will do exactly what I'm showing you here. So come in and you clean it. And what you're doing is taking off all the tooling oils so that the leaf lacquer will adhere pro properly. What do I mean by tooling oils? By tooling oils, I mean that when leaf is manufactured, there's oil and stuff on the machines. There's probably a little oil on the surface of the metal so it slides through when it's getting hammered down so that things don't stick to each other. However, when we're going to use the Whitson's Universal Lacquer, we don't want that oil on the surface. It's not good for our project. So you want a cleaner that is relatively pH neutral. This is pH neutral completely, the closest thing in the United States to this material. 
is Dawn, Blue Dawn dishwashing liquid. Um, if we got fairy di dishwashing liquid in this country, that would be another one. But we don't get fairy, or if you find it, it's very rare to find it. You don't want palm olive, which has moisturizers in it. You don't want uh, any of the others, which might have lemon juice or get, get too acidic. Sorry, my thing's getting caught. You want pH neutral cleaner. Either you want the Whitson's degreaser or you want Blue Dawn dishwashing liquid. That's why I keep saying Blue Dawn dishwashing liquid, nothing else. And then I'm taking a little bit of more cheesecloth, a little more water, and then I'm wiping off any cleaner residue that might be on here. And what this does is it completely removes the, sur the surface oils, the tooling oils, manufacturing oils from the surface so that when we apply the Whitson's leaf lacquer, it doesn't bead up on the surface. Um, think about putting water on skin with suntan oil on it and how it would bead up. You don't want that to happen. Now, if we apply this, um, the, the Whitson's leaf lacquer on here and we find it still having a little bit of that breaking on the surface, you put a rubber, you know, you put a, a, a nitrile glove on, a blue, one of my standard blue gloves on, and you just massage it on the surface and that will cover it. But that wouldn't work on an entire surface. You want to remove the grease. This only, that would help only if you had a little spot of it. So don't, don't think you can skip the cleaning part and still get a great result with the Whitson's lacquer. And this is, you know, something that you want to do to properly seal beautiful leaf. Now, we've got this damp and we're gonna let it dry for a couple hours. Um, personally, I'm gonna let it dry overnight because I've got other things to do today, but you wanna let it dry a minimum of an hour so that when we apply the Whitson's Universal Lacquer on here, we don't seal any moisture in and then have any color changes and oxidations, patinaing, whatever you wanna call it, trapped under the surface to cause discoloration. So we're gonna let it dry it's been degreased. Tomorrow, we'll put the lacquer on it. It will be beautiful. And I'm also going to, once I've lacquered this part, because it's, it's water-based, so it does not take a few, more than a few minutes to be dry to the touch. About I'd say give it an hour. I can come back. I can deal with the bottom of this. I can gild the bottom of this with the copper leaf and seal it up the next day. Again, takes a little time. You want to make sure you give everything the proper time to dry, but you really get a beautiful result. And I'm already in love with how cute this is with this dark red body that has all this weird texture created by the texture medium and the grain of the wood. I mean, look at the side here. How, how cool is that? And then we have this lovely, lovely roof that we had done with uh, Artsyville texture medium and then we did the set coat and copper over it applied the Roberson size then our copper leaf and cleaned it so that it's ready for the Whitson's universal lacquer in an hour or so all right everybody um, I'm gonna grab my camera here so that I can talk to you for a second without having it <laughs> be just my hands waving if you have any questions about this, do not hesitate to ask them in the comments. If you've noticed, Kate Whitson, was, we were lucky to get her into my live today. She is the creator, the formulator of the Whitson's Leaf Lacquer. Um, she's the person who turned me on to the Roberson's product and it truly is the nicest, the, really the nicest water-based leaf uh, lacquer, I mean leaf adhesive I've ever used. It's worth it. And now that you understand why we do the cleaning, we will apply the rubber, uh, the, boy, I got too many products in my head and I am just getting them all jumbled up. Sorry, everybody. Tomorrow we will apply the Whitson's Universal Lacquer on here. Two coats of Whitson's Universal Lacquer. This is exterior rated. So we will be good to go. All right, everybody, thanks for popping in. Have a great day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.